The legacy of scientists being musicians goes back centuries. William Herschel, who discovered the planet Uranus, was a composer. Alexander Borodin, the, the composer, was a chemist. Albert Einstein was a violinist. Victor Weisskopf, who taught here at MIT, was a major physicist in the 20th century, was a very accomplished pianist. Uh, he would often play chamber music with members of the Boston Symphony. I'm sitting at the circulation desk and Professor Stephen Erdely, who had grown up in Hungary and gone to the Franz Liszt Conservatory, had worked with composers Zoltan Kodai and Béla Bartók, and was telling me about some of those experiences. And my boss, Peter Munstedt, heard that conversation. And afterwards, we said, gee, it's too bad we didn't have a tape recorder running. Uh, we realized what he was saying was stuff that's probably not in the history books. So that's basically how it got going. Until about 1990, none of that was happening in real time. For the first five years or so of the project, I was doing the interviews on top of my already full-time job. Then in um, 2007, we got some very generous funding from Lionel Kinney, MIT class of 1953, so that I could do this officially half of my job. It is my pleasure to welcome Samuel J. Kaiser. He is Professor Emeritus in the Department of Linguistics and Philosophy at MIT. Going into it, I knew there was a rich history, but it just gets richer and richer the more I look into it. I should, we should append to the word control. The Music at MIT Oral History Project has 49 separate interview sessions with 29 people. So that means that there are some people I've interviewed more than once. Samuel J. Kaiser, he's a professor of linguistics here, but he's also a very fine jazz trombonist. My view is that, uh, that both artists and uh, the scientists are actually about the same activity, but one is more constrained than the other, much more highly constrained than the other. The artist is much less highly constrained than the scientist. When I interviewed Barry Verco, who is one of the major figures in the field of computer music, he's a, a composer as well, I was asking him about the computer as a musical instrument. An instrument is something you play, isn't it? Mm. I don't think the computer is to the point yet where you've got, where composers slash performers have got real control over what goes on there. Professor Jean Bamberger, a pianist and a music theorist. She was a student of the, um, the legendary pianist Arthur Schnabel. She's also a renowned expert on the field of how children learn music. Yeah, I think musicians are more like engineers than they would like to admit, because in order to play a piece, you have to get all around it. You have to, you have to know how it's made, and that's what engineers are doing. Jamshid Sharifi, after he graduated from MIT, he went to the Berklee College of Music and did some further studies with Herb Pomerite. And after Herb retired, Jamshid conducted the Festival Jazz Ensemble and subsequently has gone on to do lots of work in, in film music, in um, world music. He's a pianist and arranger. He's an example of an MIT student getting a thorough music education and going on to be a truly a world-class uh, musician. Music making can be a difficult thing because you're kind of putting yourself on the line, right? You're, you're putting yourself in front of an audience or you're putting yourself in front of the band or what have you. But Herb always made people feel like he had their backs, like he believed in them and supported them. He was not the kind of band leader to whip your fingers for a missed note such a loving and patient and uh, big-hearted human being. The legacy of music at MIT really goes back almost to the founding of the Institute. 
Music is a really important part of students' lives. Many of them have told me that had it not been for, for music, they would not have survived the regiment here. My life has been deeply enriched by this experience. And to know that these people's lives are documented in this way and that they will be preserved by the MIT archives forever means a lot to me.